It was basketball's boy wonder. This kid was never going to be a role player. Oh. He was going to be a star. That's the way you run a fast break. Youngest ever to play in the NBA. What would you do if you're a father and your kid comes up to you and says, I can go to college for four years, I can go make three or four million this next year? Kobe Bryant gets up off the bench. Here he comes. He's into it. Put the shirt tail in, son. Now a boy in a man's world. Guys wear strip clothes. I don't want to strip clothes for. For what? Bryant by three. Here to play basketball, man. A loner who kept his private life secret. He enjoys his privacy, and his privacy vanishes as soon as he steps out of his room. The high school kid from Italy who tried to take on the entire league all by himself. There were times when I just would shake my head. You know, this kid needs to calm his game down. He needs to learn how to use everybody else. I don't think it's a selfishness. I think it's just he just feels like he's invincible out there on the court and he can't be stopped. That's got to be for five six. He has so much ability that he feels like nobody can stop him and he can do anything. Go, he's putting out the show. He got everybody in here going crazy. Finally, they brought in a guy who knew how to win. He took shots with guys hanging on him with teammates wide open. So I had to question his vision. Does he see? Did he know these guys were open? Boy Wonder began to grow up. That's a beautiful jumper. And I could just see in his face, oh, I just want to win. I just want to win. He might be the best total player in the game. This is Kobe Bryant. I'm not sure I've ever seen that move before. Beyond the glory. The Western Conference Finals saw the LA Lakers pitted against perennial rival, the Portland Trailblazers. The Lakers had led 3 to 1 in the series, but then Portland came back, winning the next two and forcing a game 7. In the fourth quarter, the Lakers were down by 15 points. That was the moment I, I used to dream about when I was a kid. Being in those type of situations, being in the NBA Finals, uh, being on the road, being put in a position when your back's up against the wall, you know, and everybody thinks that you're going to lose the game. Each of the three previous seasons had seen the Lakers knocked off in the playoffs, twice by Utah, and then in 1999 by the San Antonio Spurs. Now it appeared the Lakers were just minutes away from another frustrated offseason. And Pippen pulls up for three. And Portland's off to a great start. But then, midway through the fourth quarter, Kobe Bryant got hot. Kobe, it's Kobe Bryant's three. It's Kobe again. And suddenly, it was showtime to the sequel. Portland was finished. Six games later, Reggie turns it. So were the Indiana Pacers. Just four years had passed since 17 year old Kobe Bryant had sprung out of high school and straight into the NBA. Now he and the Lakers were world champions. But Kobe remained an enigma to his teammates. They wondered. Who did this kid, Kobe Bryant, think he was? Our conflict since basically day one has been how much you want to do on your own and how much are you going to do in the team offense. But it was not so much who Kobe was as who Kobe was determined to be, the best player ever to play the game. When my father's playing on TV, I would have a little setup, a little hoop in the living room and I'll play. You know, while he's playing, then when they take a timeout, then I sit down and I take my little timeout. I remember putting on a little jersey, like one of those little white tank tops. My mom used to help me. She used to scribble my dad's number on there. 
Kobe Bryant's earliest memories are of basketball. It was just there when I was like four or five years old. I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to play. Bryant, it's around short, down the middle, scoop shot on the way, ball's in! Kobe's dad, Joe Jellybean Bryant, played eight years in the NBA, first for the 76ers, and then San Diego and Houston. When Kobe was six, Joe signed a deal to play in the Italian League. For the next seven years, the Bryants lived in Italy. The lifestyle uh, and the culture was pretty easy to adapt to. But the language, man, <laughs> I think it was like the first day I got into a fight with this kid, because he said, Nero, like, guarda, Nero, Nero, which means, look, black. Now, I guess he's never seen a black person before. And uh, I thought he said, you know, look, you know something else, look, nigga. And that guy and I wound up becoming best of friends <laughs> for my first couple years in Italy. So. Kobe soon began to learn Italian and came to speak it fluently. He speak uh, like, uh, not so bad like I speak English, but <laughs> he speak really well, really well. He speak um, Italian uh, uh, normally, like if it was uh, his language. When Kobe was seven, he got his first leather basketball. It became his constant companion. He even slept with it. But finding a game was tough, unless the game was soccer. 13 guys would show up and come down to the court uh, ready to play soccer because they would have the soccer posts right underneath the basket. And so I would just stay there and play. And then when they finished, I started playing basketball again. Joe and Kobe kept tabs on their favorite NBA teams by watching videotapes. Kobe studied these by the hour, trying to memorize the moves of his favorite players. Magic, he was the top one. You know, when Michael was coming up, I didn't like him too much. But I was a Magic fan. Kobe hung out with Joe's Italian League teams. It was like a correspondence school in basketball. Every time the players stopped their training, Kobe would immediately jump on the basketball court. He would get the ball that he always had in his hands and would start shooting. At the end of every game here in Pistoia, I remember that Kobe, going on court, would steal the ball from the last player that had it in his hands because he wanted to practice his shots. The audience would sometimes stay longer only to watch him. A 12-year-old boy shooting at a basket. In campo. On the basketball court, his personality was very strong. For example, he rarely passed the ball to the other players, but he usually made the basket, so he had a good reason not to give the ball away. In 1991, Joe Bryant retired from basketball and brought his family home to Philadelphia. That November, while scanning the sports section, Kobe was surprised to see Magic missing from the Laker lineup. The next morning, my mother comes in and tells me he's HIV positive. I was like, dang, well, what does that mean? You know, can he play? Is he going to be all right? And so she, she had to explain everything to me. And that broke my heart. Because of the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers. Magic's retirement spelled the end for Lakers Showtime. It would be nine years before a kid from Italy would help bring it back. In 1991, Joe Bryant brought his family back from Italy to live in Philadelphia, where he'd once played with the Sixers. His son Kobe 